Encampment is a, a large-scale public participatory art installation or artwork. It's kind of this living, breathing sculpture that's brought to life by people visiting it. That's our storage room over there. Mm -hmm. um, and as you see, there's some materials in there, but we're going to have materials for 200 tents. So whatever training you want to do around the production collaborators, sawing, like however, to make sure that it's as stable as possible, not ruin the grass, keep it up. The creative, the production collaborators helping with continuity will do that too because they're going to have to put up the tents as well if they fall. But come January, we put out a public call all across southern Ontario and a little bit into the northern United States for individuals to come and work with us in building these installations inside the tents. And these installations designed specifically for these A-frame tents were all inspired by the story of an individual who lived during the War of 1812 based on the history, the civilian history, and it was a diverse history, so encompassing Southern Ontario, the Northern United States, Native history, Black history, uh, diverse European histories, and histories of women, so typically some of those stories that wouldn't be told in uh, history books as we generally learn the War of 1812. So what I'd like to do today, both Jenny and I have talked that we thought last week was successful when we broke the groups into like, again, the small neighborhoods where you had an opportunity to discuss your emblems, where sometimes that discussion allows you to bring out more ideas around those emblems. We ended up with 125 collaborators to work with us and together as a team we built 200 installations based on these stories and develop an installation that would give people who went into the tent a little bit of a sense of what that person's life would have been like. You know, if, if you hadn't left it and you would have right, left right, winning right. the battle, yeah. it would have been, yeah. fine and good, and he still would have been like this great hero, in a sense. But they definitely did martyr him after this. They martyred him? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, so it's, they, and they're both very important battles. In the second battle, Chicago, as it was then, which wasn't very much, but was, was lost to the British, so. Um, there's a lot there, and I'm kind of trying to unpack it. My two characters. Oh, that's good. I was hoping to find the person who uh, chose John McDonald because um, my character Baldwin uh, challenged him to a duel. He did. Yeah. Right? This side will be closed. Okay. Yep. Just so that you know. I thought it was an in and out. No. Okay, so it's a circle. I have tried to like resist getting too solid with what it is I'm going to make. I've been trying to really like respond to content of the workshop, which has definitely triggered stuff. So I've been waiting for this day to finally see the tent. Sometimes they, they kind of like droop in also like your height in kind of relation to this. Um, and just you just get a better sense of the space that it really isn't. Um, you can't really like create walls or like have things hanging because it's it has to be in a in kind of an initial impact also i don't know if i mentioned this to you before but he lost everything during the war like everything he became bankrupt and um and lost his house and all his money and everything so it's sort of like to me i started looking at it like the shirt off my back you know it's like he gave everything he had i was excited to come because of the feedback we've been getting from the other like artists you know so i have you know, the really? beginnings of an idea, but it's really just a mock-up. This project in itself is very unique because of the way we work with people and the way we engage people. My history is in dance and choreography, so obviously it's different because it's the visual arts. Um, but I think that the primary difference is really the way that we engage people in working as a team. So I don't, I was thinking of building like a pile of like kaleidoscopes or like all of these like Oh, like yeah. his vision? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So just building like a hundred of them and putting them in a pile in the middle. It's, it's, it's often termed in, in, our, in art speak as micro utopias. And we just call it collective engagement or creative engagement. So we try to create a group of people who suddenly have an opportunity once a week to discuss, uh, you know, several things like be it the content, be it the materials, be it the structure. And that's what, they, that's what they talk about. And I think that's very exciting when people have that opportunity. The authenticity is what you bring to the feeling of your character inside of that tent for the, for the spectators to experience. 
So when they go in there, they go, oh, wow, that's... It, they're not even thinking about the details, they're just thinking about the full sensation. Um, in theater and dance, there's an ensemble and people work together because they're dancing on stage and you make a whole. But in this case, everybody's making kind of this larger experience that's really hard to see from the inside out because there are so many people and so many different factors. And then there's the weather and it's outside and the tents. Like there's so many different elements that could change the outcome at any given time. I'm just coming to check in. Yeah. How's it going? It's, it's going okay. It was a little bit more oh difficult than I thought. For that, we did our draft and final installs where people actually practiced mounting them in the tents, uh, which isn't that easy because of the shape. So because we're not used to thinking in triangles, a lot of the logistics of actually mounting it were really challenging. My idea here is like a printing press exploded because he was, um, he was the printer until he printed his own publication back when it wasn't like the, the idea of free press didn't exist. So he was kind of a pioneer for that. It's a, a duct tape fuse in there. So if someone does hang themselves, it'll break away. It'll break away. Oh my God, Ian. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, like, really great. oh, there's a dead body in here. That's great. Oh, no, sorry. You made it so that no one could actually hang themselves. Yeah, because it's an actual, you know, hanging is not. We had some people who come in and they would go come to the first uh, session we would have, and, and we would talk and go through it. And we have a whole design journal that Jenny and I have been working on studiously to create. And they would come in and look at it and go, um, okay, well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be here anymore, but I'll have the work done. Say we have 125 people participating, you might only get 25 who become completely passionate about the work, and and that's great. I'm actually kind of liking it if this place does get looted and people take things, because it's like the Americans when they arrived here. They took things, they looted things, nice. they went into houses and they wrecked things. So if this disappears during the running of it and somebody wants it as a souvenir, oh well, right? It's gone, right? Yeah, I, I really hope this, when it's all put together, doesn't disappear. That might actually be attached, might be a little more difficult for them to take. But say he disappears, oh well, right? Say some of this disappears. Say some of these disappear, oh well, it goes. Everything went up, all the installations went in. We took two days to get the tents up. The installations all went in in one day. 125 people, I think most of them were most of them were pretty good. There was about three or four people who were unable to make the setup or unable to complete or something happened with their work that they weren't able to get it in. And then yeah, we had our 17 day run. they lived and how they died and um, I'm glad to see the country sort of recognizing the War of 1812. 200 different tents, 200 different artists and it's all open to interpretation. I think the view of the skyline is pretty interesting, the juxtaposition between the historic and the new. I like that, I like the angles, I don't really ever come here the way. I think it's magical, it's transformational, um, it's an incredible way to learn about our history. Um, it's both really serious kind of whimsical and fun. 
and it uh, it brings the fort to life. What do you think of this? Do you want to sleep here tonight? Yes. yes. You're all going to be in your own tent? Yes. You going to be scared here? No. Good. I think what was most um, compelling so far what I've seen is not individual tents, but the, the feeling that you get from the whole exhibit. And it's, it's almost like pieces of a puzzle and that you hope that when it's finished that you have sort of a, a beginning understanding of what they went through 200 years ago. Of the 30 we've seen, the two that kind of get me are the one of the burnt schoolroom over at the beginning and the one just over here where it's a father and brother deserted uh, the force because the force is because they had to go home and feed for their starving families and it's a scale of wearing weighing bullets against grain. I thought that was really cool. So it was so amazing. I was like walking around and looking into all these tents and it was getting dark and the lights were coming up and then the gulls were like flying in and June bugs are hitting me in the head and they said what did it, it's like what happened? I said what was curious about it is that it doesn't happen. Like it never happened like that before and it never and then once we pulled the tents out it didn't happen again. You have to trust serendipity because art is not science. It's not architecture. It's not designed. It's uh, it's created. A lot of people took it for granted. Well, it's just a bunch of tents with stuff in it. Well, it's actually not. It's an artwork. And the more, you know, the, the love you give it, the love it gives back. And so I think it was demanding um, love. And it got the love. And then I think it's clear that it gave it back uh, in the end. A nice way of putting it up. Well, thank you. Tom and I work amazingly well together. <laughs> we got mad at each other, too. But there's nothing to do really about it. was really mad at me yesterday. Yeah, well, you were like... I was a bit of an asshole. I said something, and he's like, take a walk. So I did. I'm like, maybe I'll just walk and never come back. She did that once in New York. I got her so upset. She said, first she ripped my shirt, my favorite guest shirt, the guest t-shirt, which I loved and adored. Like, just ripped it right off my body within seconds. It wasn't quite that bad. <laughs> they have so many things of us fighting, I think. <laughs>